Welcome all to Chasing Temps. My name is Abby to this very informal vlog where I'm swiveling, swiveling my chair and I'm laid back and I'm going to be answering some of your very intriguing questions. It's been three years uh, I've been on YouTube and I never do any live Q&A. Maybe I'm like uh, the Indian Prime Minister who doesn't like any live questions and answers. But um, I am just I just thought I answer the questions on the public forums very diplomatically sometimes to some of the like uh, in, intriguing things you guys have to ask. So I thought I'll do this video and answer many of those questions, uh, even about how much uh, on YouTube I'm making or something like that, you know, whatever. So it'll be interesting. Uh, and get yourself a cup of tea or a beer or a wine, uh, you know, and this is uh, Christmas, uh, New Year time. And uh, I have kind of taken pictures of all the interesting questions I always get, uh, you know, three years now. And I thought I'll, I'll compile a list and uh, every year I th think I do something like this, but I never get a chance. So guys, here we go. First question is, how do you deal with negative comments or feedback? I mean, I get this question a lot, especially people who are starting on YouTube. I actually, not sounding big headed, but I actually hardly ever, ever get any negative comments. Um, I'm just not a... Uh, I'm not a person who's like very controversial, you know, and uh, it's kind of um, really uh, laid back person. And if someone gives me constructive feedback, I mean, especially after my crushes, my three crushes, I did get some uh, uh, people saying that oh, you, you think you crashed like this, but we thought you could have done this. And I think you are wrong here. So I will take that on the chin and I'll learn from it and I will take their uh, I wouldn't start a debate over it. I will just learn from it. And, you know, and, and, and that's why I don't really get into uh, get, get a lot of negative comments. And I don't really show off for boastfulness or on the track to something uh, silly deliberately. And I have done this silly things and crash myself, but uh, not with anybody else. Anyways, next one is what made you start YouTube? What inspired you? Uh, well, if you want to talk about inspiration, then Alberto Nasca, the Italian chap, I used to follow him for a while and I quite liked his stuff. And Baron Von Grumble, uh, the uh, 44 Teeth guy, before, it, before 44 Teeth, I used to follow him in 2013, 2014. I did start recording a, a NEC Motorcycle Live in 2016 uh, on a GoPro 4 and that would have been my first ever vlog in 2016. But then I started in 2019, March, Portomeo something. And so three years late and those three years were crucial, I think, because... Uh, now YouTube is, people don't really, YouTube, I, I hate calling myself a YouTuber. I would say content creator. People have got this stigma with, with YouTube and uh, it's, it's not very popular. People might watch something but not subscribe. It's just the, the way it is. So yeah, NASCAR inspired me and I thought uh, the reason I would like a YouTube channel is to have a diary system of all my videos because I used to go to track days in 2016, 2015, 2017, 18, and I would not do anything with those videos. Those videos will get lost or deleted because I need more space. In this way, I have a cloud system, which is YouTube, of all my stuff. So when I get older, uh, I can look at these things and see how um, clever or rubbish I was. So anyways, next question. Uh, funniest moment on track. Uh, funniest moment on track. Um, don't worry if I sound if I look like I'm thinking about something I'm not because I've already thought about all the answers I'm just pretending so the funniest moment on track was um, me wearing long johns proper long johns you know like not the breathable layer you wear underneath uh, like Alpine Stars or Dane Easy this was like a cold uh, Silverstone track day 2017 or something I was wearing long johns and every time I would lean the bike my long johns would rip you know from the crotch area and the more I leaned, the more, you know, it felt like my zip is opening, you know, um, uh, like, uh, was it Quattararo, you know, his zip opened lately. And uh, um, yeah, so that was quite embarrassing for me. And just a personal thing, I didn't tell that to anyone, but I'm telling it now. I had a massive hole this big because those long johns couldn't take this stretch of the lean. Um, I didn't used to lean that much in 2017, but still, it was a massive hole there. And it was a cold day and uh, it was proper warm long johns and they ripped two shreds in a way. So that was embarrassing for me. Okay, the next one is, you haven't crashed in two years. What's changed? <laughs> so basically, um, I think what happened was in 2019, I went on a very quick learning curve. Uh, 2018, I think I was Inters. 2019, I did two Portomeos and Hareth within a month at the start of the year. So I had a really 
steep uh, kind of uh, the more track days you do the better you get so i was really getting good by the time it was her red third day I was, I was feeling really confident then i had silverson doddington snetterton all sorts and i was being really good but by the end of the year i had i had two crashes in two weeks uh silverson and snetterton and that wasn't very good so uh, what's changed is i've completely changed the way i ride i don't take liberties I, I lean less now but hang more and and a few other things uh, so basically i've just tried to do more track time get more coaching and try to be a bit calmer and uh, you know my famous saying is like gopro always says be a hero but don't be a hero on track you know just try to you know take it easy now so and that's really helped you know and uh, if i make a mistake i just come back in the pits and sort my tires out and stuff so yeah so i'll do a, a, a bigger video on this one later on next one um why don't you race uh, i will actually this year i'm going to be doing some endurance uh, racing and more on that on a proper video so uh, i will race so uh, lap times are getting decent so uh, i was approached by an endurance racing team within no limits i think yeah no limits and uh, hopefully i should be doing that but more on that on another video so i will the simple answer is uh where do you live <laughs> i live in the black country uh just outside wolverhampton just just on the on the border of wolverhampton so yeah that's where i live um what's the best comment you've ever got um i don't really have a best comment i think consistently a positive comment which i get is that i don't have a big head i don't boast about things even if i have a good track day where i did a stunning stonking lap you know and it was the lap of the day i just take it easy you know like, like yeah cool no problem you know and uh, and don't really um, show off about say parts you know bikes fully loaded and stuff like that but i don't really you know look what i've got you know like and stuff like that on on uh, on any any social media platform so i d i don't like that so i consistently i get it's like i'm like i'm down to earth and that is that sh comes out in the videos uh, and uh, and i i do good storytelling you know that's that's what i get consistently um do you uh, do you think you're famous <laughs> Do you think you're famous? My God, I got that last month. And uh, no, I, no, no, no. It's what I would say is when I go to a track day, I meet a few people. They will approach saying, "Oh, I've seen your videos and stuff like that." And I think I'm uh, there. There's a few people who know me in the track day scene uh, from my nicey image, uh, you know, which is my basic nature. And uh, but I'm not famous or anything like that. I mean, I hardly load any videos on YouTube. You know, I've been on YouTube for three years, and I've got some three and a half or three thousand seven hundred subscribers. So I, I, you know, I, I'm not one of those people who's hungry to get famous or money. You know, and and I'm not a typical YouTuber. You know, I just load videos for uh, for everyone's sake and and just just as a diary. Okay, next is uh, why Aprilia. Uh, I, it's the best handling bike. Um, best thing out there you know on the track on the road uh, as well it it's it you can take liberties on it and you don't crash that easily you know i have you know i have crashed but uh, yeah just all together a really great bike you know power is manageable handling is superb best bike of the year for many years with most magazines if not first then second and i think the only thing uh, which is uh, be beating it this year is the uh, ducati uh, the v4 sp which I think is a limited edition, very expensive bike. So I don't know why they compare that to the normal factory, but that's uh, another topic. Um, okay, what helmets do you have? I have, I have a AGV um, uh, Pista GPR, a uh, a Nex uh, helmet, which is a, a custom kind of a uh, custom bike helmet, Portuguese company, really nice carbon fiber stuff. Uh, I have a G, I was playing around with it, uh, GT Veloce, which. Uh, which is lovely, um, a AGV X3000, which is a custom uh, bike helmet again uh, for uh, for some retro bikes I have, and then a up there, which I never use, a 30 pound helmet, which is a GMAC uh, something, and that was my first extra large two kilo helmet. I don't know what, I, I'm not even extra large, I'm medium. I don't know what I was thinking, and um, you know, just just bought that uh, you know it was in a basket a sale basket 2013 december i bought that and a uh, big mistake i used to get massive neck issues so yeah um, these are my all my helmets uh, anyways next one uh, what bikes do you have what bikes do i have uh, aprilia rsv4 rf 2015 
uh, limited edition 180 out of 500 uh, you know that comes up on some forums um, then um, a uh, Triumph Daytona 900 Super 3 love that bike you know limited edition bike you know Cosworth worked uh, uh, a bit on the head and stuff like that I did a documentary on that bike great bike uh, then a Honda CBR 1000F uh, made a video on it. I got uh, inspired by an old Bollywood movie. I bought that bike. Loved the livery on the bike. Really nice. And a Suzuki GXSR 1100 slingshot in a better than showroom condition, which I absolutely love. So these are the bikes I have at the moment. I have not missed on any. Uh, okay, next one. Um, what's behind you? What What's behind me? Oh, I made a video on this actually. Um, Behind me is some Formula One cars and some Formula One pictures. Uh, that is the first ever Grand Prix at Silverstone. That is Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost. There's some uh, every decade cars, championship winning cars for in Formula One is there. That is uh, Jim Clark at uh, Zandvoort uh, in the Lotus 49, which is my favorite Formula One car. And my helmet says a Chesterfield chair. There's a, there's a wood burning stove. There's an old um uh, kind of a mirror there and uh, there's a there's an old piano there there's a electronic piano there there's an led tv there and there's some lights <laughs> this is what's in the i've done a video on on this whole room because loads of people always kept asking what's behind me uh, you can check on my uh, channel somewhere uh does cool bikes get chicks does cool oh do, do cool bikes get chicks um no um you know that is such a wrong thing um you know i, I uh, you, you're never gonna get I don't know I, I've never I never looked into this and I've never felt this I think girls are not girls don't give a damn about you know bikes I mean certain me petrol head girls would but I think cool bikes don't get you uh, chicks I think a good heart and honesty and and being a great guy and, and uh, massively romantic and passionate will get you girls and being truthful uh, will get you girls and uh, but no cool bikes I don't think get chicks uh, just just saying loud pipes save lives i believe in that loud pipes loud exhaust pipes do save lives on, on, on the on the on the road and stuff like that i do believe in that uh you improved a lot on the track what was the reason uh okay so uh, i improved a lot on the track in the last two years it's just more track time honestly uh, anyone can improve on the track uh, just need more track time slightly bigger balls at times uh, to get good decent lap time but main thing is coaching uh, track coaching, online coaching. There's we're lucky to be in this country to have amazing coaches like uh, Mike Spike Edwards, Dean Ellison. Uh, you know you've got uh, not so fast Dale, uh, Dale Sykes with the Focus Events. Uh, loads of people we've got. We are very lucky. Uh, so you know, coaching is everything, and more track time is everything. Okay, uh, why can't you do any work on your bike? Oh yeah, I'm really rubbish at uh, DIY on the bike and in general. Um, I think it stems from, I think in this country, I, I'm born and bred in India. I was uh, 18 when I came to this country. So uh, I think when you're in India, without being big headed, if you are a middle classy family, you just have people who will do work for you. You know, you have, um, with all due respect, you have like help, helpers from Nepal or they will maintain your car or do, do the house. And, and this is a common theme in India. So I've never been a hands on guy because of these reasons. We were never rich. We were just a normal Family. My mom was a head uh, head teacher on a school, and my uh, dad had a uh, a rubber chemical business uh, in his own factory. Uh, you know, I think raw material for retreading tires or something like that, or V belts. So just a normalish family. But you know, when you've got helpers from uh, um, uh, striving countries, I should say, who want to come to India, and they they are then become your helpers uh, in the house, and makes your life easy. Then you don't you you never get hands on. So that is my excuse. You know, I was never given a spanner ever. So I'm, I'm scared to work on my bike. You know, I do some decent speeds on the bike on a track. I'm scared to even change brake pads. So that is the God's honest truth. Honestly, this is the reason, uh, you know, uh, and it's a very honest reason. Next one. Um, one thing which you learned on the road, which helps you on the track, uh, using my legs, uh, really, um, on the road, uh, getting out of trouble. So before doing these track days, we used to do some crazy uh, trips from Wolverhampton to Wales uh, within an hour or something. We would be there and we'd never do that again. We would never do it again. It was just stupid. You know, riding a bike on the uh, on the road really 
fast you know in the early hours of the morning on saturday or a sunday depending on the weather and uh, if i would get in trouble you know going into another lane you know as turning i would just use my legs you know and body weight to turn and that what i learned from the road you know has translated on the track if i've been in trouble i've been able to save myself from going in the gravel or something by just like you know come on don't think about anything else except saving yourself and that's what uh, really helped me uh which bike do you regret selling the most to be honest i regretted the triumph daytona 900 uh, selling it and but then i bought a a super 3 version which was more special so uh no what i can say is the bike i would um yearn to have is my dad's old yawa or jawa 250 uh yesdi is called in india 250 cc two stroke I would love to have that in this country um, and also uh, the the Tom Cruise bike you know the the Kawasaki from the Top Gun movie I like it but I've already got two bikes which are in line four and I don't like you know to have the same cylinders you know uh, I've got a V4 and a triple and two inline fours I would not like to buy another inline four so I would love to buy that Kawasaki but I, I just won't so yeah in terms of selling i had a cx500 honda which i sold and i felt really sad because it was a very special bike because it was a custom bike but uh, it didn't give me the theater of a custom bike like a thumping big engine it had 500 cc twin you know like a moto guzzi and um and um, so yeah I, I only regretted selling that for a week or two but i was okay after that so no uh, nothing else. Uh, what's your main job? I, I work in a bank. I am just I've just got a normal job in a bank. I am a fraud analyst. I look after cryptocurrency fraud, which is quite common these days. So nothing hi-fi, just a, a normal nice job which pays the bills. Uh, YouTube doesn't pay the bills. Uh, which bike do you regret? Oh, sorry. What bike is next on your radar? Oh, that was the Kawasaki. Sorry, uh, the the bike. Um, but yeah, no, I can't afford any more bikes now. I've, got what i've got and that's about it really um you got a dodgy accent where are you from <laughs> i did get that comment uh, i am born in india i've got a semi-british accent i was in a convent a very strict convent english speaking school in india so english speaking was never a problem uh, but obviously you can never have that same british accent what the british people have i love different accents around the country i lived in slough for a bit i lived in kent rochester strood uh, for a bit um, I lived in Birmingham for a bit. Now I'm in the black country. So, um, you know, I've had different ish accents and people with people. But uh, yeah, that's the reason I've got a dodgy accent. Uh, it is dodgy. I still struggle with my V's and W's. So I can never say Vivian, Vivian Westwood and stuff like that. Uh, anyways, um, next one is um, what's your main job? Why you got a dodgy accent? Um, done that already. Do you still mess up your V's and W's? <laughs> I just mentioned that. I get I actually get this from my old work colleagues a lot on YouTube. They will deliberately comment this uh, to uh, my V's and W's. So if you are Indian from India, V and W is kind of similar, like maybe German people as well. So yeah, I did used to struggle with my V's and W's. So Vivian Westwood, I, it takes me a second of thinking time to say that. Uh, do you blame the carbon wheels for your crash? Oh my God. Never. You know, I when I crashed at Silverstone, a few people said on the on YouTube um, that you crashed uh, because your carbon wheel failed. No, 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 never. Never blame, you know, a product and this a company because of your shortcomings. You know, that day I crashed because of my fault. The tires were cold. Uh, I did four right handers and then a and then a left hander. Tire was a bit dirty as well, but it's got nothing to do with the, the carbon wheel. So that's a common uh, question I get asked on that Silverstone crash. Uh, are you happy with the money you get on YouTube? Very nicely worded answer. So congratulations to you, whoever answered that. I'm not going to mention any names. Um, they didn't ask how much money I make on YouTube because I make nothing. So, okay, the thing is, I am not a greedy person in general. So I don't put too many ads on my videos. I think on a 10 minute video, I will put maximum two ads, maybe one at the start. So we can control the ads we put. So on a 10 minute video, I put two ads. On a 15 minute video, I put three ads. On a 20 minute video, I put 
three ads again because on a 50 minute video with the triumph documentary and stuff i put five ads so um yeah so i'm not greedy after you know i would like to build an audience first then start shoving ads in on in people's throat you know so uh no i'm not happy with the money i get on youtube is pennies pathetic it's crap i spend more money on making some of the travel kind of a you know where i've gone to uh to someone's house to film their bike or or or, or somewhere you know i'd spend more money on the kit camera kit i've got a massive light here which was 200 pounds a light there which was 80 pound a light there which was uh 50 60 quid camera was 400 pound gimbal drone you name it have i made that money back from youtube no i haven't simply i haven't you know and then i pay for copyright free music i pay for uh you know gigabyte transfers and you know we transfer and stuff like that so all that and my website that's 24 pound a month where no one buys any t-shirt of mine with chasing tents on so i don't i don't make any money um on on that so uh, i think any money I, I get from youtube gets spent unfortunately uh with upgrades or or, or not upgrades on the bikes just kind of kit upgrade and stuff like that so yeah th these were the questions i get commonly asked any further questions you want to ask me uh, please feel free to put it on the comment section. I will diplomatically diplomatically answer them on the comment section, but I'll probably make another video like this maybe at the end of the year. So thanks for watching, guys. If you haven't subscribed or liked, please do so. Thanks.